happening right now in Moscow as well as in Kiev, almost near simultaneously. Uh, in Moscow, Chinese President Xi Jinping sat down for a second day of talks with Russian President Vladimir Putin. Xi has invited his dear friend Putin to travel to China at a time of his choice later this year. But the world's eyes, uh, this meeting will have an impact on the war in Ukraine. In recent weeks, China has attempted to portray itself as a peacemaker, calling for a ceasefire and releasing a 12-point peace plan. Putin has told Xi that he viewed China's proposals with respect, but the talks have focused on strengthening coordination and cooperation with Russia, which is why Ukraine and the West remain skeptical of any breakthrough, with many believing that Xi Jinping's visit provides diplomatic cover for Moscow. So what exactly is at stake both for Xi Jinping and Vladimir Putin? Ever since Russia's invasion of Ukraine and the backlash from the West, Putin has been working hard to retain ties with the non-Western world. So in that, in that sense, Xi Jinping's visit offers a huge respite to the Russian leadership because Putin can say that Russia is not isolated. On the other hand, Xi Jinping can project China as a defiant global superpower and a reliable partner. And coming on the heels of the landmark Saudi Arabia-Iran deal, Xi Jinping will be pitching himself as a potential peacemaker in Ukraine. While Xi Jinping met his Russian counterpart in Moscow, Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida made a surprise visit to Kiev to meet Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky. This is the first time that a Japanese Prime Minister has visited a country or a region with ongoing fighting since World War II. It's also the first visit to Ukraine by an Asian member of the G7 grouping. Kishida's visit is to deliver a message of solidarity and support for Ukraine. But it caught Beijing by surprise as the Japanese Prime Minister entered Poland from India using a secretly chartered plane instead of the standard government aircraft. China hit out saying that Tokyo should do more to de-escalate the situation. The simultaneous visits by Kishida and Xi Jinping underscore deep divisions between Asian neighbours. This is particularly true when it comes to the war in Ukraine. Japan is pledging its full-fledged support for Kiev. While China remains a lone voice supporting an increasingly isolated Russia, in the face of China's growing assertiveness, Japan and the United States have moved closer in recent years, particularly on regional security and intelligence cooperation. Japan is also a member of the Quad, the informal grouping which also has India, Australia and the United States. China sees the Quad as a grouping meant to purely contain its rights. Meanwhile, we're getting some piece of breaking news, and this is an important one. Vladimir Putin, while speaking alongside his Chinese counterpart Xi Jinping, saying that the West is not yet ready for the Chinese peace plan in Ukraine to become the basis for the settlement of this conflict. That's what he has said just moments ago uh, while he was sharing stage with his Chinese counterpart Xi Jinping at the Kremlin in Moscow. Uh, let me go across to our guests who are joining us. Professor Victor Gao is chair professor at Sucho University. Calvin Dark is a democratic strategist from Washington, D.C. Alexander Brateski uh, is senior analyst. And Alexei Goncharenko is a Ukrainian member of parliament. Uh, let's try and see who we can... All right, let's start with Kevin Dark. Kevin, uh, you know, it comes down to a simple proposition. China is saying this war has gone on for over a year. The United States and its European partners don't seem to be in a position to be able to end it. In fact, they believe, on the contrary, the U.S. is only further fueling this war. Therefore, it's up to Russia as the second biggest economic power in the world to try and push both sides, Russia and Ukraine, towards some kind of peace. Well, I think that that way of reading the situation is definitely the way Putin would love um, it to be read. You know, uh, if the war could stop right now, um, if Putin stopped it. And so if China had any real interest in a real peace plan, which is one where um, Russia would stop its war in Ukraine, they would tell them now. Um, unfortunately, with the peace plan, as it's been described um, from China that was presented, um, China doesn't have the credibility with the international community to be that mediator that they um, think they could be. And also, if, if you look at what Russia is doing, it's China that's filling in those holes, filling in those gaps due to the sanctions and the um, other the Western U.S. businesses that are no longer doing business in Russia. Okay. So I don't see how China um, being one of Russia's 
biggest supporters could call itself a mediator between Russia and Ukraine when this could all end today if Putin uh, and Russia decided it wanted to. Well, well the, the point is, if Putin does decide that he wants to end this war, then what is the off-ramp that uh, the Western world and Ukraine is willing to give him? Because if the conflict were to be frozen today, Alexander Bratowski, uh, it would necessarily mean that uh, 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 Russia keeps whatever portion of Ukraine it has as uh, under its control right now, which is anywhere between a fourth to a fifth. But the point is, that would still mean that Putin had violated Ukraine's territorial integrity and sovereignty, which is the very first point uh, on uh, the Chinese peace plan. The very first point would have been violated. Yes, it's absolutely true. So the situation right now, it's very difficult for both sides. Russia is unwilling to compromise and to leave territories that already took over and actually not even took over, but included them in the constitution, in constitutional provisions of the Russian Federation. So now for China, it's a very, it's a very, uh, it's a very hard dance with Russia, uh, unfortunately. So uh, China, of course, has influence over Russia. And probably there are some, some things can be can be actually described behind the scenes, right? But right now, what we can see, if Russia will definitely move forward and offer something, that means the Chinese influence made some something over over Russia. Otherwise, okay. you know that w this is, will be uh, an empty um, ability to to do something to stop um, a further escalation of of the war. So, so uh, right now, of course, President Putin is trying to to say that things are okay, and uh, and you know I'm supported by the Chinese uh, Chinese person. A Chinese leader who, oh, but already, as I have spoken to one of the former senior diplomats, he said in the Chinese gambit, Russia is a minor partner. So, which is very much, uh, you know, uh, bad for Russia itself because Russia could not anymore rely on its other hand. Let's say European Union. Okay. That was China with us, European Union. That was something with the United States. Now it's only China. So, it looks like Russia is pushed directly into China's uh, China sphere. So of let me ask uh, uh, Alexei Goncharenko, who is a Ukrainian member of parliament, uh, you know, how seriously do you take the Chinese peace plan? It's a 12-point peace plan. Uh, if the conflict were to be frozen today, Mr. Goncharenko, that would mean that Ukraine would have to give up some of its territory, which it had prior to the 24th of February last year. Uh, so the question being, would Ukraine be amenable to such an idea? Because otherwise, this fighting is just going to go on nonstop. It's never going to end. Why? Never. Ukraine can liberate its territories. That's all. Well, that's what oh, partly we did. Last year, we liberated a big part of our territories, which were previously occupied by Russia. So that, uh, for the moment, it looks like the most possible the end of this war, just liberation of our territories. We're not going to give up any inch of our territory and the world cannot uh, allow this to happen because that will mean that international order just doesn't work. That one country can attack another one, taking part of its territory, that sovereignty means nothing, that international law means nothing, and uh, that will be a disaster for the whole but Mr. world. Mr. Goncharenko, so while I... you're saying all of this in theory is, is practical and it's applicable, but the fact is that... Today, in practical terms, your army is not in a position to push back the Russian army to the position uh, that it had before the 24th of February last year. That's just the reality of the battlefield. Who told this? Why are you saying that this is reality? Last year, Russia was telling that they will take Kiev in two, three days. In the reality, Ukraine last year liberated big part of our territory in the east near Kharkiv. We liberated Kherson which is the only regional capital which was occupied by Russia from February 24 of last year. So we showed that we can win against Russians. Okay. And now we are preparing a counteroffensive. So we will see what will be the result. We uh, don't let me also go across to Professor Victor Gao uh, from, from a Chinese perspective. Uh, no one thinks, so at least of all the United States or, or its European partners, uh, that China has... Forget about the heft. Maybe it has the heft, but it certainly doesn't have the sincerity uh, to agree to, to, to get both sides to agree on some kind of a cessation of hostilities. It may have some leverage over Putin, uh, but certainly no leverage over Zelensky or Ukraine. And like you heard from the Ukrainian MP, 
Ukraine is not going to settle for anything less than taking back every inch of land that it had with it before this war began. Thank you very much for having me. The Chinese peace proposal for the Ukrainian war or the Ukrainian crisis is the only peace proposal in front of mankind as a whole. Peace is not easy between Russia and uh, Ukraine. Peace sometimes may be even more difficult than war. However, prolonging the war in Ukraine will prolong the suffering of the Ukrainian people, leading to more deaths among the Ukrainian civilians. And the fact that the United States and many NATO member states keep pouring more fire onto the fuel in Ukraine doesn't help ending the war as quickly as possible. China's peace proposal actually was tabled before the peace between Saudi Arabia and Iran as mediated by China. Mm -hmm. If Iran and Saudi Arabia can really reach a peace agreement, despite of all the impossibilities, why shouldn't we give uh, peace a chance between Russia and Ukraine? Because, now, because Professor, Gao, idea, Professor Gao, there, give me a moment, because uh, uh, while Iran and Saudi Arabia have a hundred differences and they may be involved in, you know, proxy wars, if you will, in Yemen and Syria and so on, there is no active war going on between Iran and Saudi Arabia right now. There is an active war going on between Russia and Ukraine, number one. And number two, whether you like it or not, the Russia-Ukraine war is practically a war between NATO and Russia. It just so happens to be in Ukraine. The battlefield happens to be in Ukraine, but it's actually a war between NATO and Russia. That's not the case between Iran and Saudi Arabia. Exactly. Exactly. Every situation has its own characteristics. You're absolutely right. The war in uh, Ukraine is fast becoming a proxy war by the United States and NATO using Ukraine as a proxy against Russia. Therefore, this proxy war is very dangerous because it may spill out of control into other countries, including NATO member states. It may escalate from conventional war into unconventional war. It may not only be a disaster to Ukrainian people, it may become a huge disaster to mankind as a whole. This is the right time to call for a ceasefire, put a stop to the war as quickly as possible. No, I, no, I think I think one of the problems is doesn't mean yeah. that the territorial disputes between got, got Russia it. and Ukraine will be solved overnight. I, I, I no, get that. Nothing that easy. I get but that. Each party will present its claims, I, which I will get be that. conflicting, so, which will be overlapping. So, but so, eventually, once you strive for so, peace, so what China, so what China is essentially playing discussed. at, Calvin Dark, is not so much a settlement of this of this crisis or a settlement of this no. war. What they are playing at, Calvin Dark is simply if they can get both sides to stop the hostilities. Even if, even if tomorrow Putin were to say that I'm not going to you know, ask my, my, my troops to attack uh, for the next 15 days, that in itself would be seen as a bit of a coup. That's what China's playing at. Well, you know, this is actually a lot more simple than folks are, are making it. Um, the reason this conflict is being prolonged is because of Putin. If Putin stopped today and withdrew, from if, if Putin uh, followed, I think it was the first point of the peace plan proposed by China by respecting the territorial integrity of sovereign nations, this would be over tomorrow. If Putin withdrew his troops and stopped attacking Ukraine, I guarantee you the United States would, would stop supplying um, arms to Ukraine. But this is Cal not Cal about two Calvin, Calvin, the point is if he were to withdraw, over if he were to withdraw today, why would he? Why would he have attacked Ukraine in the first place? What is he going back with if he were to withdraw today? Well, that's why I think it was a mistake. And that's why I think that um, China is, I, I don't know if this is one of their goals, but I know it's Putin's goal. He needs to save face. Um, the international community, NATO, the United States, should not turn this into how can we help Putin um, save face. If the Chinese really are behind the peace plan that they've proposed, there's one party that could stop it all today, okay. and and that that's Putin and Russia. And I don't think the international community should be in the business of trying to help Putin save face from an illegal invasion of a sovereign country. Okay, so let me let me uh, give the final word to Alexei Goncharenko, the Ukrainian member of parliament. Most wars in history have ended in some kind of a negotiated settlement, uh, whether it's from the world wars to you know the Vietnam War. Ultimately, there has to be some amount of give and take. Right now, what's happening is that Mr. Zelensky, your president, is not willing to give an inch 
And unless that happens, you're not going to see a cessation of hostilities. So essentially, you, what you're saying to your people and to the world is this fighting is going to go on till at least next winter before there is uh, some kind of move towards peace. No, what we are saying, we are saying we want to restore international order. That's all what we are saying. And yes, you mentioned world wars, but how they finished with the defeat of aggressor. Germany attacked in the First World War, it was defeated and it was peace. Germany attacked in the Second World War, it was defeated and it was the peace. Russia attacked now, it should be defeated and there will be peace. Or Russia can withdraw, like our American colleagues said. That's, they can do it today and the war will be finished. That's all. Okay. Uh, Alexander Bratersky, what is then stopping Vladimir Putin? Because our American friends have been saying this as well, that... This war can end tomorrow if Vladimir Putin says, OK, I'm done. I, I wanted to teach Ukraine a lesson. I've done that. Now I'm going back. Yeah, the situation is very complicated. I do agree with all the participants. I mean, President Putin would definitely not withdraw from Ukraine because only if there is something changes on the ground. If let's say if there's a loss, if the, he will see that and then he's going to do that because he actually did that himself. So and he incorporated those territories into uh, the uh, uh, Russian Federation. Some of the potent critics are saying, and I might agree with them, the war continues, the Putin still stay, uh, then the Putin still stays because the war okay. machine is actually making him the, the president right. right now. So we'll I see how that's, this that's the plays most, out. Uh, My own uh, that, uh, uh, gut is that both sides, both the Russian side and the Ukrainian side, uh, are preparing for further offensive. It's going to get far more bloodier, this conflict, before we move to some kind of a uh, a negotiated settlement or at least a cessation of hostilities before we can move to a settlement. Uh, yes, China is trying, but I don't think uh, A, the Ukrainians or their benefactors in the West trust China to be an honest arbiter. And even in the case of Putin, what is the off ramp? What is the solution that's being offered by China so that he can, quote unquote, as they famously say in China, save face? I'm going to take a quick break. When we come back on the other side, the man who angered the entire country with his bid to try and desecrate the tricolor in London has been arrested. But is the Khalistan rot too deep? How does India deal with this? Right on the other side for this quick one.